Hi, and welcome to John's Motorcycle Rescue and Review. Today, we are looking at the third installment of my Blasts from the Past video series. And over the years, I have owned a lot of different really cool bikes. And even though I don't have them in the garage currently, I thought it would be fun to share some of my vintage pictures and just my riding impressions and memories of these bikes. I'll also be sharing a little bit of history about each model and the specifications on the bikes. In today's episode, we will be looking at Kawasaki's 1988 through 1990 ZX-10. Although the ZX-10 was a ninja in the US, in Europe, they called it the Tomcat. When the ZX-10 debuted in 1988, it was the fastest production motorcycle you could buy. It recorded a top speed of 167 miles an hour in testing, and it really put everybody else on the trailer. There was nothing that could keep up with the ZX-10 in a straight line. The ZX-10 was a sport bike, and it was really meant to compete with the GSX-R 1100 from Suzuki, Yamaha's FZ-1000, and Honda's CBR-1000. The ZX-10 had an aluminum frame. The engine was a 997cc inline four-cylinder. It was liquid-cooled, dual overhead cam with 16 valves. It had 36 millimeter semi-downdraft CV carburetors. The compression ratio was 11 to 1. As I said before, top speed was 167 miles an hour. Horsepower at the rear wheel was right around 115 horsepower. The ZX-10 had dual disc brakes up front and a single disc in the rear. In the front, it had the twin piston calipers. Wheel sizes, it had a 17 inch front wheel. And unlike today's bike, it actually had a larger 18 inch rear wheel. The weight on the ZX-10 was 540 pounds dry. The quarter mile performance on the 1988 ZX-10 it would do the quarter mile in 10.71 seconds at 128.6 miles an hour. Uh, zero to 60 took 2.65 seconds. Uh, one of the nice features on the ZX-10, it had eccentric chain adjusters. And man, those things make adjusting your chain just a breeze. Uh, really nice feature of the bike. My riding impressions of the ZX-10. Keep in mind that when I had, when I bought this ZX-10, it was my first big sport bike, or my first sport bike at all. Uh, I thought the ZX-10 was a comfortable bike to ride. I remember the first time I took the bike out, I was actually looking to purchase it, and I had a modified uh, Suzuki GS1100G that I was riding at the time, and it was, it was set up nicely. It, it was a quick bike. And I got on the ZX-10 and it was very smooth. And right away with that very clean fairing, I noticed that I got very little wind turbulence. Uh, the bike was very smooth. It had a six speed transmission. It didn't have quite the low end torque of the GS-1100, but it, it really sang up top. There was just no comparison. And so I took it out on a drive and I was out in the countryside and came into a small town and I thought, okay, you know, I'm coming into town, I better slow down. So I slowed down to what I thought was right around 35 miles an hour. I thought, okay, I'm, I'm fine now. And I looked down and I was still doing an indicated 70 miles an hour. And so I thought, man, this is different. This is something completely different than what I'm used to. I was used to the standard bikes where you just get a lot more wind turbulence at speed and a lot more of a sense of speed when you are at speed on those bikes. The ZX-10, you're tucked in, you're behind the fairing, you sit in the bike, and it's just a, a fantastic feeling. I absolutely love that bike. This particular ZX-10 was modified. It had a K&N air filter. It had a jet kit in it. It was jetted for the pipe, which was a custom D&D unit. It was actually fully ceramic coated and it had a shortened tailpipe, and it sounded so gnarly. It sounded really, really mean. This particular bike was dynoed at 126 horsepower at the rear wheel, so that's like a 10 or 11 horsepower jump over the stock one, and it was a mean machine. 
one of the things I, I liked doing on the bike was coming up over small rises and just lofting the front wheel a little bit. But it was interesting. That's where I first noticed the little bit of power dip in the power band. If I hit the rise at 3,500 RPM, uh, it, would, it would easily loft the front wheel. If I hit it at around 4,000 RPM or a little bit higher, it actually would not loft the front wheel. And then if I hit it, obviously if I hit it at a higher RPM, it would really, really loft the front wheel. Uh, you know, that's where I kind of noticed that it had a flat spot in the power band. I thought mine, because of the pipe, might have been a little bit off. It might have needed a little bit more tuning. In looking at the torque curves and power curves of stock ZX-10s, I see that this is an inherent feature of the ZX-10 power band. Kind of a funny story on, on the ZX-10. Uh, my wife and I were headed to the lake to do some water skiing, and my brother-in-law was also riding his Eliminator 900 on the highway, a little bit impromptu, but we decided that we were going to kind of get on it a little bit. And I saw 150 miles an hour indicated on the, the speedometer, and my wife was jabbing me in the ribs, something fierce with her hands. So uh, I let off at that point and, you know, thought about it later. That was a pretty stupid thing to do. But when we got to the lake, my wife's hair was actually braided through the shirt that she was wearing because of the amount of uh, wind turbulence that she was getting. It had actually woven her hair into the shirt. So she was not real happy with me. The stability on the ZX-10 was great. It was of an era when the motorcycles, they were heavier handling than the later bikes were. It took a lot of effort to turn the bike, but I'm a, I'm a big guy, I'm six foot four. And to me, I didn't mind that extra effort because it, what came with it was uh, a very stable platform. The ZX-10 was never twitchy. It, it never did anything that I wasn't expecting. It was not a quick, agile handler, uh, definitely nothing like a CBR 900 Fireblade. It was, it was much more stable and took a lot more effort to get the most out of it when riding quickly and I was able to ride it quickly. I never had a problem keeping up with people on that bike. The first thing I did to the bike was add some EBC brake rotors. Uh, the stock rotors were warped when I got it. I also added a really nice Corbin uh, gunfighter and lady seat to the bike. Uh, modifications that were on it, it had a really nice smoked windshield. The brakes on the ZX-10 were decent. Uh, it was a fast bike. If I would own another one today, I would definitely upgrade the lines to steel braided lines. They're not up to modern sport bike standards. They're simply not. But for the time period, you know, it was a very fast bike. It was a heavy bike. The, the braking was adequate. It was certainly better than on my old GS1100 at that point. So it was an improvement for me. I thought they were pretty decent. It was a very tough decision to sell my ZX-10. I did not want to, but it made financial sense at the time, and I had other bikes in the garage that, that I was buying and selling, and so I ended up selling the bike. To my eye, the ZX-10 is still one of the prettiest bikes of that era, of the late 80s and early 90s, and I just think it's a gorgeous machine. I love the color scheme on my 1989. It was a mix of like a charcoal silver, black, and red, and it had some custom, very tasteful pinstriping that was done on it as well. It was in nice condition. It was a beautiful bike. You know, I regretted selling it. The engine on the bike was very smooth. Ergonomics for me, being a tall guy, the legroom was a little bit in short supply. Uh, it was a bit of a reach to the bars. Uh, it was not as radical as the GSXR uh, 1100. It was also not as radical as the FZ 1000, but it was still pretty radical. It was still a sport bike. The Honda CBR 1000 might have been a little bit more comfortable, but the bike was edgy. It had an edginess to it that was fantastic. I loved it. I love the speed. I, I love the rawness of it. I love the sound of the pipe. Even though functionally I have owned and ridden much faster, more capable bikes around a racetrack, to me that did it just pushed a lot of the hot buttons for me. And it just, even today, 
I recently rode a 94 ZX11 and it just brought back those really good feelings that I had for my ZX10. Uh, again, those were similar bikes, but there's just an edginess to them, a sound, a little bit of a rawness that I really enjoyed on it. In first gear, if I leaned forward over the front of the bike a little bit, I could, without slipping the clutch or anything, just on acceleration, I could smoke the back tire. And then if I leaned back on the bike, if I sat a little bit more towards the back of the driver's seat, it would loft the front wheel. It would just kind of slowly bring the front end up. And very easy under acceleration. It wasn't one that threatened to wheelie back over on you. Man, it hit hard, especially once it got up above 5,500 RPM. It just ripped. When driving the ZX-10, I felt like I had ultimate power. I, it's like walking around with a bazooka on your shoulder, and any time you wanted to unleash it, it would just rip. It would rip away from traffic. And there, I've never had a situation where I was not able to keep up or stay ahead of someone in my younger days. I know it sounds like I'm gushing about the ZX-10, and you know maybe I'm looking at it a little bit through rose-colored glasses, but you have to remember the top speed on the ZX-10 in 1988 and 1989 in stock form, it was as fast as the 98 Yamaha R1. That should tell you something that 10 years after its production, it was still among the fastest bikes in the world. Really the only thing until the Hayabusa came out, the only thing that would put this on the trailer would be the ZX-11. And you know, for a couple of years, Honda's Blackbird. As always, I hope you found this video entertaining and informative, and until next time, enjoy the ride.